Hi, hi, and welcome to Strap a Watch. I'm Michael Knapp, Michael Knapp Leather. So I had never been asked to make a strap look 75 years old before. And that's what you're going to see on today's episode, is I had a gentleman reach out to me a few weeks ago. His name's Bill. And he asked me to make a distressed strap. And the way he put it in the story was he had found a barn find of a watch, kind of like you find a 75-year-old Ferrari that's been in a barn all covered in dust that's been there 50 years, you know. Well, what this is, it's a double name. It's a Doxa in Favloy, but double named on the dial watch from 1945, 75-year-old watch. The limited research I've done in the last, oh, couple weeks on, on this watch, and I know he has as well because he's an avid collector, and wow, what a collection he has. His Instagram page is just, it's amazing. It's really, he's got a good eye and he knows watches. Um, we just can't find another one. Can't find another double name. You know, there's Doxas. It's definitely a Doxa head, and regardless, we don't know and whether or not if it's just components of Favloiba within the movement or if it's a Favloiba movement, I don't know. I didn't really press Bill about that too much. He's a pretty busy man. I was trying to get some more shots of the watch. Uh, unfortunately, he said he was gonna be quite busy this weekend and any time that he had uh, to, to take some pictures, the, the lighting was poor outside because he's already received the strap. And uh, I made it this past week. I next day aired it to him because I was trying to get him to shoot some pictures so that we could see the final product. So he sent me two pictures with it on his wrist. So that's pretty cool. That's what you're gonna see on today's show is the build out of a distressed watch strap, making it look 75 years old on this very rare watch. And we're gonna go more into these brands uh, some of the oldest Swiss watchmakers in the world. So stick around after the intro, we'll get right into it. Well, thank you so much for joining me today on Strap a Watch. And here is the bourbon tan shell cordovan that Bill had decided to make this distressed watch strap out of. And I'll tell you, I mean, I had never done anything like this before. And you're going to be seeing me kind of abuse this strap in a way uh, without making it look like total crap. That was the whole intention was, you know, making a strap that's going to look 75 years old, right? So pretty neat, pretty neat stuff you're going to be seeing me do today. Like I said, stuff I've never, ever done before. And here is me cutting out the lining. And just to go into these brands, I went to the Doxa website. And as you can see, they've been in business since 1889, of course. It has changed hands and what have you. But one of the neat things about Doxa is, you know, especially... For me, back in the 60s, they are the ones that designed the sub for Jacques Cousteau and the Calypso team. He's, he's boarding the Calypso right there up the ladder. That was his vessel. And, man, if you don't know about Jacques Cousteau, check him out. He's one of the coolest guys that ever lived. And once again, here is Bill's watch, the Daxa and five loiba and then pronouncing that i hope i'm pronouncing it correctly i went to youtube and that's the way that the swiss were pronouncing it so that's why i'm pronouncing it that way five loiba and here is their website so i just you know the the interesting years for us are 1945 46 but this watch was from 1945 so 75 year old watch and you know trying to find out any of the backstory so listen if any of you know anything about the backstory of this double named dial watch you know let me know and that way i can convey it to bill i mean another thing bill if you're watching this episode that you could do is really just contact each of these companies and try and see if you can find a backstory on why they combined efforts and what, what was going on? Was World War II still 
you know, at the tail end. It was still ongoing. Had the war ended by the time this watch came out, we don't know. And we do know, Bill and I both, that a lot of the German pilots wore uh, Doxa watches. And they're, they're kind of smaller watches. Uh, this is a 15 millimeter lug watch. And you saw that antiquing. This is what I'm a process. I, I just purchased this specifically for Bill's watch is antiquing the edges to give it that patina of age. And these are the rough cuts, okay? I mean, these are not the final cuts. So I'm doing a lot of stuff even before getting it all put together. But yeah, 15 millimeter lug width. And so another thing you'll be seeing me do is is uh, giving the, the buckle some patina itself. You know, I hadn't uh, really thought about it until, you know, I, I kind of got into... To, the, the build itself, what I was going to do with the buckle, because with a 15 millimeter lug width and my typical two millimeter taper, you really can't find a 13 millimeter buckle. I mean, uh, you know, I looked on eBay, I looked on Etsy, I, I looked all over the internet, couldn't find one. And typically they, they go in even increments, 12 millimeter, 14, 16, what have you. So I knew, okay, we're going to go 14. It's a guy's watch. And even though it is a smaller watch, I mean, that's kind of how they were back in that era, you know. So even for men, I, I can't remember what he said the, the exact dial width. It might have been a 32 is what he said. I can't remember. Sorry about that. But is uh, you know, the buckle, I decided to go one millimeter taper to 14. And he ordered silver. And you're going to see me doing this is uh, I, I bought actually a black buckle and then I, I and I worked on it a long time. I did. I took some 1200 grit sandpaper and left purposely left some of the black on there. I, I mean, I, I probably got about 90, 95 percent of the black off, but I wanted to keep some for a patina. So there's the, the rough cuts. And here I'm saddle stitching. So. After the rough cuts, then I do the final sizing cut, and that is a taper from 15 millimeter down. Actually, that, that point end, I got it down to about 13, because then I have to apply the edge coat system, which adds about another millimeter on each side. And just wanted to show you guys applying some beeswax to this thread. So, and this is a little bit different thread than I normally use tiger thread. This is actually a... Uh, not a synthetic thread this is actually a natural thread and now i'm just applying some of the edging process uh, this is the, the second coat of some edge paint brown edge paint and you know what i'm doing is trying to make it so it's not perfect i mean that that's the whole emphasis of creating a distressed strap right is making it look old so i'm doing things here you're going to see like when i'm burnishing i am actually trying to remove some of this edge paint the giardini giardini brown number 24 so this is where i'm talking about i had already worked on this for probably an hour and i'm just now you know finalizing it getting every piece off that i don't want on there but i want to leave some black as it's like it's tarnished a little bit and what have you and leaving what we call patina or just some aging look to it like it's natural even though it's a brand new buckle right so you know and getting back to uh real quick i've never shared this on the channel before the way I pronounce words, because one of the biggest complaints I get on even YouTube comments is, oh, you pronounced this wrong. Oh, yeah, you pronounced this wrong. You know, and it's like, oh, gosh, I pronounce a lot of words wrong. Well, I actually was born with a pretty severe case of dyslexia, for real. I mean, I, I'm actually a dyslexic. There's a lot of us out there. If you are a dyslexic, you know what I'm talking about. And, um, you know, even if you have children, perhaps, or grandchildren that have dyslexia, you know, we're not stupid. It's just there's a glitch in our brain when it comes to communication, written communication, so reading, and uh, even the way we speak. And in, in the beginning of this video, 
uh, right away I say, you know, I had never made a 75-year-old strap before. I had to cut out because I said strap watch before, and I cut out the word watch. So it's even in the way I talk at times. And, of course, I invert numbers. But reading, oh, my gosh, growing up reading in the 60s and 70s, it was so tough. Because back then they were, you know, you're learning to read uh, phonetically. Hooked on phonics was the rage. And I could not read that way. I mean, think of so many words, especially with English, is a hard enough language to learn as it is. But like the word weigh, W-E-I-G-H, to weigh something. How would you pronounce it if you were really sounding it out? I mean, really think about it. What? I mean, <laughs> think about it. And there's tons of words like that. So what I did is I learned how to what's called sight read. Each and every word is like its own character. And um, so I read slowly, but one of the flip sides of my dyslexia, unlike a lot of others who are dyslexic, um, who cannot retain what they read, I have a near photographic memory. It's like, it's, it's a true blessing. I can't can't explain it it's like i see everything in pictures um people are astonished at, at the detail of what i can remember and and even myself i mean it's that's almost a double-edged sword because there's a lot of good and bad in life and i've shared about some of the things of, of my past in my life you know losing my father at the age 10 in a car accident and, you know i mean i'm not a sad sob story here but you remember it all you know, that's what I'm saying. And even what I read, I retain. If I'm into it, I mean, honestly, if I'm into it, I retain just about the whole book. You know, I mean, I, I can't go word for word, but I can remember, you know, let's say we both read a book. And two months later, we want to talk about the book. And you're, you're not going to hardly remember anything of that book. And I will. You know, that's, I'll point out things people said. And, and you'll be like, oh, wow, no, I don't remember any of that. And it happens a lot because, you know, certain people, like in my past, we would read the exact same book and they would never remember every the details that I would. So here's the keeper. I don't think I've ever showcased uh, the secondary keeper and being sewn, and I've improved on this process, but this is what's really cool. Bill sent this to me the other day right when he got the strap, and he said, straight on to 1945. Thanks, Michael. That's cool. So here we are, final product. Oh, man, and I'll tell you, this camera work does not do this justice. I mean, it's it's so cool in person. I wish I could see it in, physically on the watch. And it is so neat to see your final product on somebody's wrist, the satisfaction that I get out of that. Oh, my gosh. It's, you know, having your piece of art on somebody's wrist is just, oh, I can't tell you what it does for me. There's the backside, and you can see how I, I bent the heck out of this watch strap. And a few scratches. So, I mean, I try to make it, and I did those intentionally. I told that to Bill. So, but final product is so great. I just, oh, I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun. I think you could tell. God bless you all. And until next time, what do we say? Keep on ticking. <laughs>